3000. My name's Maloney and this is the 3000 Podcast. I'm joined today by a founding member and somewhat of a iconic figure of the Cave Clan. Is that correct, Duggo? I think so, yeah. <laughs> I'm, so. I'm joined by Duggo. Thanks for coming today, mate. No worries. Good to be here. Is that a fitting introduction? You were a founding member? I was, yes. There was uh, three of us. Uh, myself, Woody and Sloth. And uh, yeah, Woody was a school friend and Sloth was his brother. Is. Is his brother. And uh, yeah, that, that was uh, three of us. I was probably the most obsessed. Well, I was the most obsessed out of the, the three of us. But um, yeah, I can... Talk more about that if you want. No, look, th that's the thing. So when I was thinking about different guests on who had uh, ties to Melbourne and what you know, different subcultures with Melbourne and the Cave Clan, as a kid growing up myself in the 80s and 90s, it was something I heard about. It was this mythological kind of entity that we didn't know too much about. So I'm stoked that you've taken the time to, to come and say, yeah. say, your, uh, say your part and to tell people about what, the cave clan actually is so before we delve into it too much how would you describe the cave clan to people that aren't familiar with it um cave clan sort of comes from all walks of life the members uh there's i don't know unemployed people there's um people with degrees uh there's graffiti graffiti there's people that hate graffiti there's, uh, you know, th there's all types of people. Um, the one thing we all have in common is a sense of adventure. And the Cave Clan explores pretty much anything they can, any artificial structure. Um, so drains is part, a big part of it. Drains seems to be what people like talking to us about, but we do pretty much anything we're not that keen on sewers for obvious reasons uh but um yeah so willing willing uh like infrastructure like you know we're known for doing stuff that uh, i probably shouldn't talk too much about but like the you know train tunnels and service tunnels and things like that and right up to abandoned buildings, you know, factories, mm -hmm. um, school, abandoned schools, power stations, prisons, you know, all the cool stuff, um, which are a lot of fun. But essentially, it comes back to drains. That's the yeah. main. That's the core of the clan. Yes, and I guess we're called Cave Clan. And although you know that in itself, so like originally, we were going to do sort of caving and mines and things like that. And um, I think we sort of didn't have – we just didn't – we were young, didn't have cars. Um, so in the meantime, we thought we'd start doing drains. That what we was accessible to you? Yeah, and because I we were brought up in Northcote and Thornbury, Fairfield, that sort of area, um, the borders of our suburbs were like Mary Creek, Darabin Creek and the Yarra River. So well, I spent a lot of time sort of riding my bike – along those waterways and I, I sort of saw a few tunnels so I knew I had them in the back of my head that and I was always I was always um interested in tunnels which is weird even before I knew what what tunnels were I um used to have dreams as a little as a really a like, little kid sliding down these like concrete pipes sort of they were more like nightmares um and that's and that's interesting that you've chased your nightmare your, yeah. something that was a nightmare and you've turned yeah. that into somewhat of yeah. a life's work and, well I, and, and you know like at i went to fairfield primary and um i remember hearing at some stage that there was a tunnel under the school which which years later i ended up doing but as a primary school student you know i went underneath a portable and started digging with a stick, you know. To find I, the tunnel. Yeah, 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 as a kid would. And, you know, I <laughs> got down about 10 centimetres and thought, geez, this is hard work. But in, in that same time, um, I did lift a, lift a grill outside the school after school one day, and I was about halfway down. My, like, my legs were in the, the shaft. And Miss Matthews, our PE teacher, 
She's like, Duggo. She didn't call me that, but I'm not going to say my real name. <laughs> Duggo, get out of that train. And um, which I did. But um, and then my first day of secondary school North at Northcote Tech, um, we went. I heard about this drain that went under Northcote Tech, and the first day I I went up there, I had brand new uniform, and um, out the front there's like a big slide thing, and yeah, we did that thing where we walked up to the dark, where it got dark around the bend, and someone screamed, and we all ran, and I slid outside and ripped my pants, ripped my jumper. Um, yeah, it was like first day of school. But I get, I guess there's no like at that stage. You're told not to go in the drains, which makes it then more attractive to a kid with a sense of adventure to go into the drains. Mm. But there's also no one else who's gone in there, so you think, fuck, let's go and see what's in there. You know what I mean? Mm. So you guys must be like, okay, I've got a sense of adventure. We're told not to go in there. You find some other friends at school and you just get some torches and you dive in. Is that how it sort of starts? Pretty pretty much. Pretty much. um, Like at school... I used to get like huge amounts of people. Like, I need to go back up that um, the Northcote Tech one. It's like a, it's quite a small tunnel, and it's they built a uh, dam out the front, so you got to walk through water, and it's only like five foot high, and I'm like almost two meters tall. So I don't, and I'm old, <laughs> and um, I need to go back up. But I think once we had um, we had like eighteen students up there, and as we were leaving, Mister Kelly. Um, he uh, was standing outside and he literally said, right, you know, come out. And he wrote down all our names and then he sort of turned the page over and he kept going and then he realised, oh, hang on, half the school's up here. Uh, yeah. So he's just like, get back to class. Get and class. He just, you know, we didn't get in any trouble because because there were so many of us. But um, we used to get heaps, but none of them were interested in exploring. They were interested in going up the dark bit and screaming or writing, you know, Bon Scott rules yeah. or you know, ACDC. <laughs> Um, shit like that, or smoking, you know, smoking up there because no one would bother them. No one, no one at my school. And I wasn't, when I was doing that, I wasn't doing it with Woody, even though he was uh, at the school. It wasn't until after school, till I left school, that um, yeah, I went past his house and said, oh, you want to go do Northcote Tech Darkies, as we called them? No, we used to call them Darkies. I don't, don't, we don't anymore. Leads to some confusion. But, um, yeah, and then he said, yep, and then he came out. We went to go, and he goes, oh, this is my brother Sloth, who I'd never met, and that was you know, the first time we we explored as a group. And, um, yeah, and then, then they rang me, Woody rang me one day and said, oh, we're house-sitting my sister's house at Diamond Creek. Mm. Do you, you do you want to come along for the weekend? And I was like, oh, yeah, there's Diamond Creek Mines, and um, do you want to check out the mines? So we went there for the weekend, and that was when I was like, because I'd been thinking about for years about trying to start a group to do it, and I said to Woody and Sophie, "Do you want to start a group?" Yeah, and that that sort of weekend we came up with the name, um, the logo. Um, that that was the Australia Day long weekend in nineteen eighty six. Eighty six. Eighty six. Yes. So, so you're coming up to an anniversary soon. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well. Yeah, we're not going to call it Australia Day. We're not going to call it. <laughs> Invasion Day. Or Woody, Woody's a Woody's always a real sort of socialist. He used to be in the uh, International Socialist, so he never called it Australia Day. We just called it the Cave Clan Anniversary. We don't even yeah. the public holiday. I think is is the politically correct way that we we uh, call it or what we call it at the moment. But yep. you can't change it. That's the fact that you guys came up with the name. You came up with the the branding, and then you, I guess you the next step. I guess you try and find other members is that mm, mm. how it works yes and and that we really struggled with that um I, I was sort of yeah i was sort of going around looking for the well we didn't really real we were quite, we we're obviously noobs we didn't know much about it i sort of started looking for drains on my own because woody and woody had other things he was doing and um Soft was his younger brother, so it might have been a bit weird at, back in those days if I said, come with me, and it was really new, early days, and I sort of started finding a few, but we never found anything that special. And, um, yeah, so after a couple of years, I think it was after the second year, we were like, oh, let's give it up. Are they unmarked at this point? Like, you're going in there, you're not seeing much in the way of the, tags or people that have been there sort of marking their territory? If you do, if we did, and, you know, realising it over time... <clears throat> Um, 
you know, there'd be like the sewer rats or the drain kids and, yep. you know, all that sort of thing. Which is not as cool as the cave clan. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> of course not. But the, but the, they, they, you just see their name in, you know, two drains that were like a kilometre away from each other. There was no one travelling. But then we started seeing, well, yeah, so there was no one, to answer your question. There was no, like, urbex scene or there was nothing like that. So I couldn't, we couldn't say, hey, because the graffiti that we saw were, was probably... 13 year old kids primitive and, stuff yeah. that yeah yeah and um but then we started so we did see some old stuff from the 50s like the drain uh the drainiacs that's a sick name yeah yeah that's a pretty cool name yeah um yeah they're, 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 they'd been in a few drains but even more so was um which most people that have anything to do with cave van or even drain exploring in melbourne know uh, know of alf sadlier um and we'd always mention him when we do media stuff back in the day and, yeah, one day someone wrote, I think we did something with the Herald back when it was just the Herald, and um, someone wrote to the paper and said, oh, I'm, I'm Alf's sister or something like that, and told us a story that he worked for Mel. So we always thought he was some guy that explored in the 50s because we'd see all these really cool drones that we started finding. Um, we'd see this big black, like in tar paint, I call it, but it'd just say Alf Sadlier and a date, whatever, whatever, 1958. In the 50s. Yeah. And what, what we found out was, um, I think even in the 40s, I'm pretty sure it was yeah, in the 40s, what we found out was um, that he was worked for Melbourne Water, or back in the day it was called the Melbourne Metropolitan Border Works, and he used to build the drains. And basically when they were about to put the last piece in, he'd get in and write his, wow. write his name. And uh, so he's kind of a, a legend in uh, Melbourne drain exploring. But uh, And his name's in... I don't know, I'd say at least 15, but he's in most of the main older drains. So uh, w when you say the drains and, like, for someone like myself who's never gone delving into them, they're just where the storm water would go after it leaves ground level. Is that predominantly what we're talking about? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like, so when you're walking or driving down your, uh, your local street and you see those slits, which we call gutter boxes, and they have, normally have a little concrete cover on them. Um, that's what we'll normally, well, if we can't walk in the entrance, we'll normally try and get out of them because we know they're in nature strips, not in the middle of a road. Mm -hmm. um, they lead into, like sometimes you've got to crawl up a side pipe to get into them. So you might get in at a gutter and it'll just be like a, you know, 40 centimetre pipe. And you might crawl for 20 metres and it'll go into two bigger pipes yeah, so it's like a tributary, and each time you get to another one, it gets a bit bigger and a bit bigger until you end up in a main... Well, they're, they're actually called main drains. Yeah. Um, so if Melbourne Water, uh, all their names are like QMD, main drain. Yeah. So once... Yeah. The, um, and then they just... Quite often, usually the bigger ones were waterways, like probably one of the most well-known ones is Williams Creek, which runs under Elizabeth Street in the city. Um, that was, geez, when, so when we first started, we started in 86 and I, within a year or two, there was an article in the paper about that drain being, uh, 100 years old. Um, so yeah, late, um, 1880s. So are they cobblestone, that brick? What is it it's, made? It's a bit of blue stone, red brick, and they're like balloon shapes. Yeah. Um, so they're rounded tops with the pointed bottom. And I think the bottoms have got blue stone because blue stone, they're really well made and really expensive, obviously. You wouldn't make them that way nowadays. But yeah. the bluestone, when the water runs along, it doesn't erode into it too much or it takes a lot longer. Um, so, yeah, so that was Williams. And it used to flood. It used to be an open creek. Elizabeth Street used to be an open creek. And everyone used to just throw all the shit in it, yep. crap in it. And it was just disgusting. And um, when it used to flood, it, you know, the whole all the shops would get damaged and that. So, yeah, so 100 and... 20 or 30 years ago, they put it underground. They put it into two. So there's like a gigantic bluestone one and a smaller one. They just run side by side. And they have like little floodgates so they can divert, divert the water into... They, they've got cross sections. So it's a, it's, a, it's quite a unique for, for Australia or for Melbourne. Um, it's quite a unique setup. If there is a flash flood type scenario, which does happen in Melbourne a fair mm. bit, mm. if you're down there and that happens out of nowhere, then you're in a lot of trouble. Like it's you're talking like a lot of water coming at you really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So flash flooding or the summer storms, 
yeah, you're pretty much fucked if you're down. Really? Yeah. It's just... Uh, well, I mean, it depends on certain things. Um, I'm not... I don't want to say, oh, no, you can survive it. I'd rather just say... But, I mean, if you were um, down there and... So it depends on a, quite a few different things. Like, for example, this is getting a bit technical, but if you enter a tunnel with the flow... So you enter at the inlet, yep. so the water's flowing into a pipe. Well, you can't hear. If, the, if it's raining 10 kilometres away, you can't hear that water coming. Mm-hmm. But if you enter at the outlet where the water's coming out, and it could be a tunnel that goes for 8 kilometres or something, well, you can hear the water coming because it's coming from upstream. So, And when it's in a tunnel, you can hear it. For, you get like a, a quite a lengthy warning. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's raining where you are, all the small side pipes will start filling up. And um, you, you can, you can, yeah. So it depends where you are. If you, if you, if you're unaware, if the flood's coming and you're walking into in, inlet and you get hit, you, you, you know, depending how big the flood is. Um, so you do, you do your due diligence and you make sure that there's you, you look at and there's not much un, unexpected weather coming, that sort of thing. Yes. You know where your exit routes are and that sort of yep. stuff. Yep. But I guess that's when you're going in in the late eighties. There's no maps no one has gone to the to the you know to, in to sort of document anything you're going in pretty blindly you're flying by your seat of your pants a little bit yeah. and and it's just I'm, I'm guessing sometimes you even pop up somewhere and you don't even know exactly where you're going to be in the city yes well right on both occasions like <laughs> um the there was no bomb no bureau of meteorology well there was but You'd look in yesterday's paper and, you know, and certain areas, like if you were down near the beach or whatever, um, you'd sort of look out. Yeah, yeah, it's nice and sunny, but the storm could be forming over the bay. Um, and, yeah, as far as coming air, yeah, we, we didn't – we used to record the entrances. We were – back in the day, we were never really into mapping and um, we didn't – we tried not to use maps. It was because finding the tunnels – and whatever we're looking for. But you went to the point eventually that you would document it for each other or for other people? We started a lot, what we called a location list, so it would have the name of the drain and basically how to get to it and a few bits of information, like maybe uh, the height, the shape of the entrance, does it change shape, does it get bigger, uh, things like that. It was very basic. Uh, it didn't tell you where it went. Um, if there was another end, it would have... Um, like uh, Sloth's Tomb, and then it'd have a double... The second entry would be Sloth's Tomb, the inlet. One would be the outlet, one would be the inlet. Um, yeah, so we weren't mapping them as such um, for, for, like, maybe for the first 20 years, and it was only certain people that... It was almost shunned having a map. It was oh, almost... It took the adventure out of it. Yeah, yeah. It was like the hunt was part of it, and, um, yeah, like, although, having said that, I used to know my way. I used to... Like, I'd be fine in the drain. I'd get out and I'd be like, I don't know where I am. One time we got out of a drain, well, Sloth's Tomb, the one I just mentioned, we got out of a drain at we'd found the inlet, which was really far up the tunnel, and we got out and we're like, where the hell are we? And we walked around for half an hour trying to get back to where, we, where we'd started because we'd left our backpacks in, that, in the tunnel at the, at the start. So we had to go back to the entrance. And... Um, I reckon we looked for an hour and we couldn't find our way. We ended up going, oh, hang on, this looks familiar. And it was where we'd got out. So we ended up having to get in and go through this little <laughs> tunnel all the way back through the bloody thing. Um, so literally, yeah, know our way better around underground than than we do above. That's, I guess, probably a, a fitting segue. So you felt comfortable down there and I guess you're meeting other people that feel comfortable down there. You expand the group or you want to expand the group mm. and you start a PO box is what I believe is the first way besides meeting people in the actual drains is the way that you expanded the clan in the first place? Before the PO box, we used to, we'd go out to, so when we, st- so I'll, I'll, I'll give you the short version. Yeah, to, to, man, we're here, we're here, we've got time. Yeah, 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 now we've got time. Um, uh, so, as I mentioned earlier on, after a couple of years, we were like, oh, this isn't really working. Um, and we sort of said we're not going to do it anymore. And by that, I mean, I spoke to Sloth recently, and he goes, I can't remember ever planning on quitting. And I was thinking to myself, well, it's, I was going to stop doing stuff. And if I, because I was the one that was sort of Pushing you know, going out looking for stuff and that, I was going to stop doing stuff, which 
it probably means A would stop too. And um, and I'd sort of, yeah, we'd cut right back. And then my younger brother, who knew about the cave clan, um, he said to me, he goes, oh, I saw this message written underneath uh, Normandy Road near the Northcote Golf Course saying cave clan phone um, Shane and a phone number. So I went and got the number and then I scribbled his number out so he didn't start getting all these weird prank calls. And then I rang him and someone, an adult answered. We were all like maybe 18, 19 at this stage. This is late 80s? Yeah, this is 88. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, it turned out being um, he was Blade of the Cave Clan, of the Drain Dwellers. And um, him and Cobra and Camo was another group of guys that we'd seen their name in the tunnels. Um, in the local tunnels. So we sort of hooked up with them and then we were like, oh, we've got some tunnels to show you. And um, it sort of invigorated things. And coincidentally at that time, we should, we should do these things called message bags. So we did two ways of meeting up with people. We'd go to these main drains in each, like the north, east, west, well, not so much the west, but um, and the south, and we'd just put these messages saying, if you want to meet up with Cave Clan, if you're into exploring drains and that and when we told them how to get to this drain at north golf course which was our headquarters so to speak yeah and um then when they'd get there we'd have another thing where it says leave a date at least two weeks in advance and a time and we'll meet you here so it's a lot of fucking around like yeah you could be coming from um like my you know catching a train see this message in a drain catch a train all the way out to northcote find the drain leave a message go home Two weeks later, catch another train all the way back. Because because most of us were teenagers, and yep. a lot of us didn't drive. And that's how that's how we started meeting people. We also did a thing like we put these message bags. We hung them up in drains on the ladders that go up to manholes, and in that they would have like a list of other drains that have a cassette where we're talking. Probably probably an early earliest podcast. <laughs> Um, the Melbourne scene. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, well, this is in 88, so we make these cassettes and it'd be just the three or four of us talking shit about drains. Yeah, you should join the cave fam, whatever. Amazing. Yeah, and then um, we'd have photos. Um, and, and and that was the people that we found through both those ways, through people uh, seeing the messages and coming all the way out and also the message bags. So it, was, it was such a better, a higher success rate than... Um, I talk about it like I'm talking about a business, but no. But I I know that you wanted to grow it, mm. and it, you didn't want to keep it to yourselves, which I think is kind of interesting for such an underground thing. You wanted yeah. to make it bigger than just three mates fucking exploring. Mm. Yeah, true. And and you know, like to to go a little bit further into that, I you know, like I was like I think at the time I was playing you know football and cricket. In the summer, I was like, you know, that kind of Aussie kid, and um, and I and more of my friends were starting to get into trouble, and you know, a couple, and I sort of thought, and I've always really had this crazy, um, inexplainable thing, a passion for for tunnels and um, for the underground, and I'm sure Freud would have a ball with me, but um, anyway, he, uh, yeah, so, um. I lost my train of thought. That's all right. Well, but, yeah. <laughs> at, at about that stage, we were just talking about uh, how you're expanding yes. the, the, the group through PO boxes and message yes, bags. Okay. So, yeah, so the PO box. So what happened was we started meet, meeting people through the graffiti on the wall and, and uh, then we started doing stickers in the, in the late 80s. But... No, no one could contact us. So nowadays, all the urbex stickers are, tend to be in the tunnels. We we thought putting the stickers in the tunnels were crazy. You're not going to catch a no. You, 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 you're publicising yourself internally. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So we could write a message that would be more effective. But nowadays, the stickers are more. It's more similar to the graffiti stickers or tagging. Um, whereas the stickers we were putting up, we were putting them up in the streets. But what was happening was, well, the first thing was. Um, we didn't have a. I, I think we originally we didn't even have a PO. We didn't have any contact details on them, so maybe it was a bit sort of tagging type thing, getting a cave plan up there. But when we so we we thought well, we might as well get a PO box. Um, we got the PO box. We got uh, next door to us. We lived in Raphael Street in Abbotsford for a year, 
a few of us, and uh, Raphael Street being a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, so it was a very appropriate. Well, that I, 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 that I was going to bring up eventually, but I'll let you finish yep. your your, uh, your story. We had uh, next door to us it was just a uh, like a shed, a guy's work shed that had a um, letterbox in the front of it. So we went and got this PO box. We told him that was our address. Had a um, we somehow got a fake name, um, and. We just checked his letterbox every because he knew he was never there. We knew the guy, but finally we saw the thing from the post office. So for for well, we've still got the PO box, but I think I'm not sure about nowadays. But for like 25 years, we had a uh, PO box in a in a fake name, which can lead. I, I can tell you some other interesting stories how I know that. <laughs> but um, so then we got the PO box. So we had the stickers, Cave Clan PO box, too. You know. But by the time you put the post office box and the cave plan on the sticker, there was not much room for other stuff. So then we'd get these, all them, we started getting letters. We're like, cool. You know, and like, oh, are you guys into the clan of the cave bear? Or are you guys a Nick Cave fan? Oh, club? really? Because there's no yeah. internet, so people are just fucking yeah. going, well, th- what, is, what even is this? They don't even know what it is. Yeah. So, which led to us doing media. So we did, um, of all things, we did, um, oh, first we did People magazine. Um, in '89, and then we did a current affair. That's in, when I first, as a kid who would yeah. be would have been seven, I reckon. Yeah, that's when I first became aware of yeah. the Cave Clan after seeing a sticker. Look, the media went crazy. The media were like, "There's a group of people exploring." You know, like we we're always that sort of last thing on Friday on a current affair, the fill-in story. You know, the mm. human interest story. It wasn't like you know. So that's why that's it. All sort of makes sense in my head, anyway. So we got to the stage where we were doing um, media to get, and, and it was working. Then we'd get more members. So we went from almost quitting to within like eighteen months. We had people. We had we used to call them the East Clan, the South Clan, and the North Clan because that's what the parts of Melbourne. Then you know this is before we started going into state. And um, at that stage, is there people core members that are like? Do we need to have this attention? Do we need to expand? Or or people are like, no, nah, fuck, the more the merrier. I, I, look, I can't remember that being the case. I can remember people going, oh, this is fucking cool because someone new would join and go, I know about these awesome tunnels. And I might even always be drains. There might be other types of tunnel, like water tunnel, water supply tunnels or cavities or structures underground. Um, so I, I don't recall anyone complaining. I, I can't remember anyone ever really complaining about that. There might have been the odd person or two. It's more of an issue nowadays, jumping ahead, because... You've got to earn your stripes. Well, it's also... Okay, so, like, in the 80s, there might have been, you know, got up to 30 or 40 of us, and then it grew up to, like, up to what, 100, and then we started interstate, and there might have been a few hundred Cave Clan people in Australia by, you know, mid-90s. And there might have been like 30 by then non-clan people exploring. And they normally didn't because they didn't want to be part of a group or whatever. They had a reason. So it was all right. But nowadays it's like, you know, there might be a couple of hundred cave clan people, but there's like 2,000 other people exploring. So, so... um, And I guess it it leads you almost to the point where there's breakaway factions within the clan. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's that's, a... yeah, like as I mentioned to you before we started at the pub, um, when you were asking if I'm a part of, um, you know, organisational things like that, admin nowadays, and I'm not uh, at all, but I'm a big part of the Drain Drongos, which is the older, mm-hmm. uh, mostly older guys. And there's like about, we, we'll have a function with 30 or so people. Um, we don't even, like most of us don't even go to the annual Clanny Awards that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't been to one in since 2016. Um, so there was a split. It wasn't just, oh, well, we said, oh, yeah, no, we, we just, the changing of the guard. It was a, a, a like a proper, a group of people took over the group. And although we could have, like the older guys could have stopped it, but we just got to the stage where, like, uh, as time went on, it's like everyone was like, oh, there's a problem. Fix it. And we sort of, you know, like, and the guys that, the guys that we used to do all the work, and and they'd also cop the criticism because when you did kick someone out because they were causing problems, you know, their people that liked them suddenly they'd want to quit or they'd they'd become your enemy, and so 
you know, there wasn't much. And not, not many people said, oh, cool, well done, thanks for getting rid of them. You know, you never really heard him. It's a thankless job. It's, it was a really thankless job. And, um, yeah, so uh, it just got to a stage where we were like, you know, um, yeah, you, and got, the, you and guys, those guys sorted are, out. are respectful now to the elders, are they? Like, I don't think, well, I don't know. Um, Without sounding like, you know, you don't want to rub it in someone's face, but the guys that took over, um, who they jokingly referred to, or they used the name Crime Church of the Cave Clan, which, which, you know, I don't know why they, exactly why they called themselves that, but, um, you know, they've totally screwed up. Like, you know, most of them are gone. They just caused so much, you know, like meth got involved, um, um, a couple of them are in jail. Others have been kicked out for harassing women, um, things like that. So it's kind of like I told you so, but you don't want to be. You don't want to be like that with them. Mm. Um, and the people that did support them, that that you know, aren't bad people. I haven't had a single one of them say, "Oh yeah, we fucked up." We, you know, no one's sort of had the uh, the balls, the dash to say, you know. So I'm not interested in. There is talk now because a lot of them have gone and a lot of the supporters have gone. There is talk now about trying to get the clan back together. But, you know, I'm quite happy with how the stuff I'm doing with with people. I, I'm, you know, I could end up going back to... But there's still a few people that, you know, I'd rather speak... I'd, I'd have to sort stuff out with first. and The politics. Yeah, politics. And you put three people together and you, you're going to get politics. But... Um, yeah. So, anyway, where are we? <laughs> well, uh, you did mention before, so we're in the late 80s. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go back to there. And mm-hmm. you did mention Raphael. And then, so this is when I'm at this stage, I'm a kid who's seven years old, you know, yeah. and I'm and the Ninja Turtles are the biggest thing ever and they live in the sewers and they're in the drains. And that surely has to make kids hanging out in the drains. I want to say kids, teenagers or anybody. It just puts it on the radar a little bit more. I guess people are saying to you, oh, you're going exploring that stuff? That's like the fucking Ninja Turtles. You must have got sick of hearing that sort of thing. Um, well, we pretty much didn't... Well, I didn't tell my family, apart from my younger brother. None of us told our family. None of us told workmates. So we, we were sort of sheltered a bit. Um, the media is the main place. Like when we did that first television thing for Current Affair, we did a... Um, we shot a video, or Matt, a friend of ours, shot a video of us watching it for the first time, like a reactionary. You know, you know how you yeah, see those yeah. TikTok videos where they'll have someone watching the, the reaction videos or response or whatever they're called. Well, he filmed one of them, and there's one, you know, we're all sitting there having a few drinks, and we're watching Yana crapping on, and then suddenly it just cuts to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and, we, and you see our reaction. All of us is, ah! Cringe. And, yeah, like we didn't know they were going to mention that. But it, it must have been like kids would have been exploring a little bit more or had a more of a sense of adventure when they see that sort of stuff. And I'm just or even not not even just forgetting about the Ninja Turtles, once you start seeing people in the drains with you guys or whatever's on TV, it makes more people want to explore. Yeah. Yeah, it, it did. But but I think like if that had happened nowadays with the internet, so it was, pro, it was pre-internet. So Definitely. there wasn't a great... They still basically had to go to contact Cave Clan, and we had an we pretty soon implemented an over 18s policy. Yeah, um, we had a we had a run in where we we had to communicate with Melbourne Water, um, and they said to it they actually said to us that we um, they're not so worried about Cave Clan people because we're over eighteen. We're adults and we, we tell people the dangers. Yeah. And they're more worried about copycat, like what you're suggesting. Yeah. Um, if you if, if, Back then, kids would see stuff on Today Tonight. There's no internet. Mm. They just go, that's the, the only way of seeing something that is kind of out there is on TV like or in a magazine. Mm. Like how else can you find something that's a bit yeah. left of centre? Yeah. So the... the, the there were issues. I remember once um, kids at that time, kids were trying to get into a a grill, into a drain, like so just, I don't know, like a flood, it's a floodway, so they have a grill like the size of this table. And the 
the kid slipped through and he his head couldn't fit through, so he was hanging. So he had to be rescued. He, he he managed to get his hands up, but he was hanging by his neck, and you know that got in the papers, and it was like cave clan are responsible for this yeah. yeah so so it did happen but it it was more like just the kids going oh there's a drain at the end of it at the park at the end of the street it wasn't like they were going doing these big tunnels or going under the city yeah um you know whereas nowadays you know um without jumping too much backwards and forwards you know, nowadays i get messages um I, t- I was speaking about this somewhere recently um this guy message these kids message i say kids but whatever yeah, young adults. Yeah. I don't know how old they were. About this drain they did called God, which stands for Great Oversized Drain, and it's got a big waterfall in it with a busted ladder. It's really dodgy getting up this ladder, and um, you know they were telling me they got they went up the, the drain and got washed over this waterfall, which you know I think the only thing that stopped them breaking legs in that was probably the water. Yeah. Like you know, because if there was no water and you fell, you'd break your legs. So I think they must have got taken in, the, and then they got washed out into Mary Creek. It's just near Dites Falls, and uh, you know, like so close to dying. And um, as they were talking to me, I sort of did that, looked at what the weather was the day before, and it was shit weather. And I was like, I just wrote back, "Why the fuck were you?" Yeah, you know, and they're like, "Oh, it's such a big drain; it's not going to flood." You know, and like. There's more of that shit happening, like, you know, kids... I, got another, I saw another video of kids outside of this massive drain um, on Mooney Ponds Creek, and they had, I think they had a rope tied and uh, tied to the entrance of a flooding drain. It was like you couldn't stand in it. You'd be dead. Yeah. Or you'd be washed away, and they were surfing on a surfboard. Mm. And then when they'd fall off, they'd go get washed into Mooney Ponds Creek, but it wasn't fully flooded, so they could sort of crawl out. Of, you know, it was just stupid. Yeah. So there's a lot more... Yeah, if the... Yeah. The Ninja Turtle thing, I don't think, in comparison, it was nothing. Because well, now kids see anything online and they just copycat it anyway. Or, or they just want to do a video of them doing something crazy and put it on TikTok or whatever, you know, like yeah. um, at the risk of sounding like someone that's old, but I am, so I can. <laughs> um, but when you mention the Ninja Turtles, when one of the Ninja Turtles movies came out, I think it was The Secret of the Ooze. We went and watched it, a bunch of us, but we all, you know, sit in the pub for two hours and smuggle we'd all have a few cans so we were a bit you know rowdy and just as it, the best part of the movie was just before it started a warning came up kids storm drains are for draining not for playing or something we're all like cheering Argh! i just validation to this, to this day i kind of think i wonder what other people in the cinemas were thinking what yeah. What are these bunch of drunk guys <laughs> screaming, cheering? What are they doing at this movie in the first place? Yeah, in the and first place, yeah. yeah. But um, like, there, there's always going to be copycats and, and things like that, but I guess now kids just see anything and they run with it. They're like, oh, this is cool. I've gone to one drain and I've recorded it and now I'm an urban explorer, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, I think, that's probably why they're sending you DMs of like, check this out so you can validate them. Like yeah. back in your day, I presume it takes many meetings, many times to go and to sort of prove that you're willing to go into drains before you can get like the tick of approval. Yep. So people would bring their friends and say, hey, they want to join. You'd be like, is there a vetting process? Do you be like, no, we don't just accept anybody. You have to come here or you've got to explore X amount of drains or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. So so um, that's when, it, when I made reference before to um, the graffiti on the wall, people going all the way out, blah, 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 or people, you know, like that were already – we had a great success rate. A lot of them are still exploring, like – I'm, I'm going to go on a road trip with a guy in a couple of months that's, uh, you know, we've been exploring together for 30-odd years. Um, a lot of them are still exploring because they were already doing it. So they sort of knew a bit about it, whereas we were getting people that had never done it, mm. probably like Pretenders. yourself. If, yeah, or, or not even, just like yeah. how you were saying, you were, you'd never, you said you'd never been in a drain, mm. but you were interested in it. Mm. So we, that, that was the hard thing, getting all these people and then coming along like, okay, so we used to have these things called New Explorers Expos. There we go, yep. Yeah, and they'd come along, and sometimes you get like 30 people, 30 or 40 people, like they were quite big. And I used to do it in a way to try and make people feel welcome. I used to say, it's just going to be me or maybe two of us if you're worried about going into a drain with people you don't know, there's going to be like 20 or 30 people there like you. We're going to be outnumbered. So, Because I, I knew, I worked out over time early, in the early days that people didn't feel confident enough to come along. So I, I put an emphasis on making them feel confident. And then what we'd do is they'd, they'd come along and we'd take them through this drain and 
by the end of that day, I'd be saying if there was someone else with me, I oh, yeah, no, no way, you know, no way, no way. Because just things that they'd say or the way they were acting or whatever. And you could sort of always tell the people that were, you know, which were going to possibly make it. Um, I got pretty good at judging people, people's sort of personalities and that from from doing this for so long. And obviously if you're going to walk around in drains with people, you've got to have a really thick skin. You can't have people tiptoeing around and worrying mm. about what's around the corner. You've got to, you know, yeah. go in there and sort of embrace the gr- grimy grittiness of the, yeah. the drains have to offer. We used to have a saying, you know, you never know what's around the next bend, which is you just reminded me of it's nothing to do with what you're just saying but but it was like a, a thing you'd say to the media they'd say why do, why do you go in drains and you say we well, you never know what's around the next bend um which was that sort of you know or another version of it is when you see a drain you see a drain outlet i see a question mark yeah um i'm getting sidetracked but um no but that's cool yeah man. Yeah, yeah like it was it's it is a, a different way of looking at things but um then we so we had the new explorer things which were you know like we had them in the summer. We'd have like one every six weeks, and then we, yeah, then they, we probably have five a year, sort of thing. Um, I think they still have them. Um, I, I still give people. I, if, if you contacted me, I'd be like, "Yep, yeah, I'll put you on." To, so I still, it's not like I'm like, "No, I want nothing to do." I still funnel them through. Yeah, yep. funnel them through to the right people, and depending which state they're from and that. But um, then we started. Then the clan got to. I think it was we called it the twenty year revamp. We still didn't have a real... We still weren't really good at... Like, there was a guy that came along called Fallon who was quite well-known for his stickers. But he used to put... Um, he used to put ca- make up his own Cave Clan stickers and he'd put his own post office box in Mooney Ponds. And so when people would contact him, trying to contact the Cave Clan, he would explore with them because... Um, well, not many people liked him because he was a racist, homophobic... Um, like, on his Cave Clan stickers, he'd put like pornographic yeah, right. photo like and we sort of all like and he was batshit crazy um hello Fallon, if you're listening but um I like, guess- he, 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 this guy this is how bad he was and you can cut this out if you want no <laughs> no, no no but he, he he told me one day that um when his mother his mother had cancer and he said when when uh, my mother dies the first thing that i'm going to do is kill the lebanese family burn the lebanese family's house down across the road with them in it and we were just like Okay, we've you know normally it's like someone's oh you you may you went in the drain when it was flooding and you knew it was going to be flooding, but when you're dealing with someone that's batshit crazy, but I guess when it's you're hard. when you're hanging out in drains and you're encouraging more people that are into that, you're going to get people that yep. are they're a bit out there and yep. some of them are going to be of not sound mind and oh, that sort of thing. You know, like I won't say the majority, but but um, as far as like social misfits go, yeah, you you, you know, like people that sort of want to go around in tunnels. Um, that's why I sort of emphasise. I had sort of a normal. Yeah, you know, I had lots of friends outside of. You know, I played footy, I played cricket. I, I sort of made the choice to do it. Whereas a lot of people that come along, and you know, I always, whenever I mention this, I, I apologise to people. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with social misfits, um, but it's a. Uh, anyway, the reason I brought up Fallon was not to. Yeah, it was he was sort of a point where we so how what Fallon would come along to stuff, and we were just too scared to tell him to fuck off. Yeah. So what we do? There's a couple of quick. This is a quick one, but like he used to always get a can of spray paint, and he always go to a reject shop, and there used to be a reject shop on um in the Burke Street Mall, and it also came in in Swanson Street. It was like an L shaped one. We'd go in, and he'd go to the spray paint thing, and we just walk straight through and walk out and jump on the first tram we see. And then we just say next week when he'd show Oh, we lost you. Oh, lost you. And then another time we did it, we went down onto, and he sat down on um, Parliament Station or whatever it was. And then we heard a train pulling on the platform and we all just ran across. And that's that's because we didn't have any kind of, for, for dealing with that. So we, then after the 20 year, um, so 2006, we had this 20 year revamp. And that was when we set up a, a, a proper forums. Sydney had a forums and, and, you know, but we set up this sort of national forums. And we set up a code of ethics and we targeted that. So so basically what happened after that was you had to go through not you got invited to a new explorers expo, but then after you had to do a probation might have been like five expos. So expo being just where we'd organise a trip to go underground. 
and you'd be exploring with all the cave clan people then. And then at the end of once you once people re- ready, sometimes I might say no, do a few more. But once they sometimes it could take a year if if there was a bit people were a bit iffy. Sometimes people were just a bit immature, and then they'd vote. And I can't remember what the percentage was. I think in Sydney, do it slightly different. They, they've got to have like seven people vouch for them. And if you vouch for someone and they turn out being a dickhead, you know, um, it's sort of, I don't know if it's held against you, but it's not a good thing to... So so anyway, that's how we weeded out the felons and, yeah. and people like and that. And I guess in the 80s, early 90s, the city had a lot of... Like, there's still a lot of homeless there now, but back then there was a lot of... Heroin was a big problem, mm. and there was a lot of, you know... Homeless people, like the, like I said, there is now. The media did sort of say that these kids are living in the drains. These people are doing drugs in the drains. But I know that the core clan probably weren't about that. You're about exploring them. The cave clan has always been nerdy. Like, I, I emphasise with the Il Drono, the newsletter um, zine I did, like a lot of it was like, Oh, you know, we drank beer and went exploring and things like that. I think a lot of the int- funny or interesting stuff happened when we were drinking, but you know, most of the time, I mean, there was very little drugs involved. You know, in the eighties, nineties, even in the you know, up, up until two thousand and ten, two thousand and fifteen. I think I stopped around two fifteen, two thousand fifteen, two thousand sixteen. But when you're exploring, you'd come into people that would have been inhabiting these places that were living there, that were doing drugs, that sort of thing, and you just mm. use them as a roadblock and you go the other way or that sort of thing. Um, well, not in drains because drains aren't you can't you can't squat in most drains because yep. you just get they're washed just more out. the abandoned spots. The abandoned spots. So you see this really, which which I basically say we used to have the cave clan used to have two city blocks in melbourne on spencer street it was the old um melbourne power station and it was one block was a power station the other block was all the offices and had a theaterette and everything worked it had like fans and hot showers hot water but it was totally abandoned it'd been abandoned for like when we discovered it it'd been abandoned for 10 years the only way we found it was one long-term member gilligan his brother was check- checking the chimney for cracks. He was so that it wouldn't fall down. And he told Gilligan and said, oh, you know, this is really cool. You like abandoned shit. And uh, we explored it. We basically put a lock, a padlock on one door. They had it boarded like a cliched wooden cross, yep. um, wooden thing nailed on. So we just took the nails out of one side and the hinges off. So we just had this big door would open. We put a padlock on the gate and we for, for like two or three years we had this um, power station, there's two city blocks to ourselves. And then we went there one day and we thought, that's weird. This section is closed off and it had like purple curtains on the on the door. And we hadn't been there for, to this part of it for a few months. And we opened the door and there was like a man and woman in there on a mattress. And, and they'd actually tied it up and made an effort. They put carpet down and they were real friendly and talking to us. And um, anyway, we said, oh, yeah, no worries. We just, we just said, well, we just come in here every now and again. And then next time we went back, there was all these things from Melbourne City Council saying, if you need help with housing, stuck up. Yeah. And then there was all like someone had ransacked it and there was all like syringes, un- unopened syringes, um, and they were gone. But um, And, yeah, th- then there was that period. I don't know when that was. That was probably around the turn of the century. <laughs> <laughs> um, and th- But there was a lot more yeah, abandoned places. Yeah, there was a lot more junkies or, you know, not just homeless people but, but drug drug um but i think the media did try and sort of say that these kids these street kids these people exploring the drains were also homeless or they were do you know what i mean did they they tried to tie that into the same sort of narrative did you find that a little bit i i i can't really i don't really remember that that's not to say it didn't happen or if yeah because it was so ridiculous that um i might have just ignored it i I normally don't I, i i can't no, maybe I, mean, it's, yeah. I was young and I'm just thinking yeah. that maybe that was just, yeah. you know, people that sort of uh, teachers or something said, oh, you know, that's yeah. where the street kids are all living under the, you know what I mean? I, yeah. But the, maybe, maybe it was the media a little bit. Maybe it was some I, older I, people. I do have a thing on uh, ABC uh, that AB, it was on an ABC doco and um, it has um, kids walking through a pipe. I think it's filmed in Sydney. It's really old. It's like... Yeah, from the 90s. And I used to just keep all that sort of stuff. And it is um, 
and they were shooting up in there. So that you could be talking about that period, but I don't think it was a. I can't ever remember people ever saying that Cave Clan because we were always. If you ever see our old um, media stuff, we we're always wearing those white full bo- mm. uh, boiler suits yep. with Cave Clan stencil on the back. We look like you know people try calling us a gang and all this sort of stuff. And other people will be laughing, going, "They're not. They're not a gang. They're a bunch of nerds. They're just like cave explorers." That I don't ever remember. You know. Uh, there's been a few, and even when I mentioned before with the meth in recent years, you know, it's only a handful of people. Mm. And, Which uh, is everywhere in every culture and every sort yeah, of thing, yeah, so you, it's you, not you, even a new thing, yeah. And I think with, with it in the clan, I think that did cause, cause some issues, as in people were like, well, we don't want it. the older people were like, we don't want it to become part of the clan, you know, because their comeback was, well, you all drink, you all drink all the time and... Um, and um, yeah, I, I think that was just a thing that we didn't. Yeah, we didn't want it to happen, and uh, I think it was a social thing. Like I remember at the Clannies. So the Clannies, for those that don't know, is we have this big party every year at the end of the drain season, and people come from all over Australia and all over the world. Um, and you know, we might get up to a few hundred people there on the one night. Yeah, and I just remember one time I went up the tunnel maybe to have a piss or something, and. Um, yeah, there was a guy standing in the corner. What, what do they call it? The glass cock or whatever? I can't remember. <laughs> and he was, and I had to go up to someone saying, what, what's he doing? He's got like this little guy and he goes, oh, he's doing meth. And uh, I was like, oh, oh that's, that's, how, that's how naive I was. Like I was like, that was my first, you know, I'd never seen it um, before. And I was like, what the fuck? Isn't that something really bad? And, I go, and they were like, even people that didn't take it, they were like, oh, no, it's just a social thing. It's just a social thing. But, but years later, the same guys are, you know, now pretty fucked up. But. Well, anyway, let's not go down that path. We won't go down that path. Well, you mm. mentioned the um, Sydney and, and a few, you know, people from interstate coming down for the clannies. But, yeah, I guess it leads us into it. you were expanding interstate and I guess now potentially overseas. Yes. But this is a Melbourne podcast. It is indeed, but we've got it. But <laughs> no, so I was joking. Obviously, obviously... Um, you guys are exploring drains. It's happening here, and it is a place where uh, people know that it's been going on for a long time. But it must have been happening in other, like you know, there must be other scenes popping up all over the world that you're not probably privy to because uh, the internet's not really there in the '80s and the, until the late '90s. The internet, I guess, there isn't much to be a, a way of sharing what you're doing. But it must have been happening at other places. Well, in hindsight, I know the answer. At the time, I didn't. Um, we knew that in Paris they have the cataphiles, which are the people that explore um, the catacombs. So I, think I, I, I got a feeling that I sort of tried to base the cave clan a bit on them, as in they had just had these communities and they had these like they had like really nice dinner parties and things down. Like if you if you <coughs> if you're into that sort of thing, um, you know, Google the the, the Paris kind of and their drains would be a lot older than our ones. Well, they're kind of, they're, they're they're actually mined. So all those amazing buildings you see in um, Paris, so they're all just they just mine straight out of like at the front of it. They just and they built these <coughs> these tunnels and they used to have these things. On, it's been a while, but um, they have these rooms. So these tunnels they've got like hundreds of kilometers, like hundreds of kilometers. You get lost in there and you're fucked. But they had these... Um, and you've been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in a couple of the main ones. The, the main ones, I mean, it's that... <coughs> they have the tourist ones, which are um, really popular. I just want to know, from when you're exploring drains, everyone must think you see rats and creatures and all sorts of weird shit. Is that actually the case? Do you see all that sort of stuff? Generally, like Melbourne drains flood out so regularly that the main things that you'll see is like when you're getting out of manhole, you might see red backs and shit like that. You see them everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you'll see them. So the ones, that, the manholes that have metal lining, so not the concrete gutter box ones, the gatic they're called, the big the metal they saw, and the metal rungs, they like that. But uh, in Melbourne you might see, you'll see the occasional mouse, but they're normally near the entrance of the tunnel. Or people expect, you know, like in the movies, they'll see 12 rats just slowly walking around, but it's not, it's not like that because... <clears throat> rats and that would just get 
anything that lives down there would get washed out. And but, they're going to be on street level where there's more food, I guess, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So they might, they probably are just, you know, like if they're down in the drains, uh, they, they, you do see them, but not very often. I've probably seen it maybe 20 times in 30 years. I've seen Really? Rats. That infrequently? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's not, there's, you hardly see any. Yeah. Like if I took you in five drains tomorrow, chances are you wouldn't see a rat. What about like washed up? Bottles and syringes and shit like that, you know what I mean? That's always going down there. Well, once again, they just tend to get washed out in yeah. the flood. Yeah. Uh, I, with syringes, um, when when there was a bit of a heroin thing, you'd see them sometimes. They tend to float. Oh, the worst. They thing, end up at the beach, sadly. Yeah, they end up at the beach. And St Kilda Darky yep. um, is a drain that, um, and that's tidal. So we do that as like a fun I'll get back onto the animals in a sec. <laughs> but the St Kilda Darky, we go, like, one we did where we all dressed up in suits, about 20 of us dressed up in suits. I've got this on my YouTube channel. And we walk through this tunnel, and by the end of it, it's up to your chest, you know, if you depending on your height. And then we came out, and it was like a sunny day, and St Kilda Beach is just, cra- like, packed. And there's, like, 20 of us walking out in these suits. We look like refugees yeah. that had, you know, come off a boat, a sunken boat. Just like having twenty people walking out into this, and all these people in bikinis, and we're walking out, and it was just. But we do shit like that more for a laugh or for the shock the, value. The shock value, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no. So so you you don't see a like so this train that I went to before I met you, uh, slide it's called. When I went there a couple of months ago, so today I went back because they've done a, they've been working on now. I wanted to go see how much damage they'd done. When I went there two week, two months ago, there was a possum and it ran along and it went into one of the cracks that they were fixing it. So today, tonight when I went in, I was like, I wonder what happened to Mr. Possum. But I've hardly ever seen, a, you hardly ever see possums in drains. So Melbourne drains are pretty well built and they, they, everything gets washed out, including rubbish and shit like that. And I often put litter traps outside them. So all the litter gets caught up and then Melbourne Water will, or, or the council will empty them. Um, but we went up to Brisbane um, in May and um their wildlife's cool like it's so much better it's, it's a part of it mm-hmm. was in melbourne you might see something and go oh my god a rat um yeah we saw we went in five drains and we saw three water dragons yeah right uh, yeah which are these really cool lizards yeah. they're, they're, they're awesome um uh we saw heaps of cane toads they're ugly as fuck <laughs> um i've got some good footage of them actually if you look on my youtube channel there's a video that I put up in the last, well, definitely in the last month, the last few weeks, and it's called Cave Clan in Brisbane. Have a look at that. That's got um, all these critters that I'm talking about. I sat the camera down next to this cane toad, like so it was literally right in front of it, and um, they're not, they're, there's nothing nice look nice about a cane toad. No. Ugly I mean, bastards. You know, yeah. Green, the guy that, one of the guys that I went up with, he was like, patting them and all that because he lived up there for a while and he's like he has reptiles at home and that he has lizards and snakes and i was like fuck that but um uh eels which you see eels you see eels in melbourne drains but you'll be walking through a flood of drain and you feel something brush against your your feet whereas in in brisbane the water was clear so you could just see once again there's some on the video that i shot recently uh eels um cockroaches up there mm. like they have like literally hundreds of them the wall will just move and you go oh shit um, yeah, they because like, of the humidity. Whereas we, we, you might see the occasional cockroach down here. Um, what else did we see up there? I think that's just about covers it. I'm sure I'm missing something. Oh, bats! Bats! Uh, bats. Yeah. yeah, there was. So there's one drone up there called Bat Cave, and um, on the video, I thought these aren't going to come out in the video, but they did come out all right. When we were near the entrance of the tunnel and the daylight was coming in, um, you could just see these bats all flying around. And we've got bats down here in a couple of. Tunnels, but they'd um, be they'd hit you because they're up at eye le- at head level. So you kind of like the other things you'd be used to seeing down mm. in the in the in the wet, but the yeah. bats would be up there and they yeah. could get you in the face. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's uh, all they're pretty good at dodging you. Um, I think they use their what is it? The bouncing the ray, you know, the uh, radar. Yes, thing. the sono thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they tend to miss you. You feel them brush against you, but they very rarely crash into you. But um, glow worms. We've got glow worms in a few tunnels, but they're always tunnels that. You know, they're not storm drains and they're not tunnels that um, 
Yeah, I can't really talk too much about them. Oh, okay. Glowworms are cool. <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> that's, they're, a, that's off limits. I, well, I shouldn't even say this, but there's glowworm tunnels that we do that are 50 times better than the best glowworm tours in Australia. Like, okay. Um, uh, yeah, like there's some really cool, um, yeah, a couple of glowworm tunnels that um, – they're good because they're smaller tunnels and that they, the glowworms are like on the roof and the walls and then you're walking through water so the glowworms are reflecting off the water. Wow. It takes you like an hour and a half to walk through a tunnel and you don't need a torch. Really? Yeah, yeah you just there's so many glowworms. And you just walk through and you just start, like you start hallucinating. You feel like you're walking through a forest and it's pinholes of sunlight Ooh. and then all you see like, oh, that's a kangaroo, Aboriginal painting of a kangaroo. You just see these patterns and you're... Yeah, you know, like I, I, that's one time where I thought, geez, I wouldn't mind having some mushrooms LSD or, or something. Yeah, mushrooms, yeah, <laughs> and and because uh, I feel like that anyway. But um, but yeah, that's that's really hard. They're really hard to get into, and um, potentially not. Yeah, yeah, and you, you shouldn't. So, so that brings me to another thing: the drains are they public domain? Is it illegal to go in them? Is it is that are you breaking the law? Like, what is the fucking legal ramifications if you get caught in a drain? Well, my understanding of them, uh, um, and look, things may have changed in the last few years, but um, my understanding was well, it was always you know, up until 2016 or so, and I, I think it still is. I I would think that people would tell me if it had changed. I'd hope, but. Um, that it's a bylaw, so it's a Melbourne Water bylaw, talking spe- specifically about storm drains. Um, so I don't even think it's like a criminal. Well, p- police tend to not, when they catch you, you know, uh, we've never. I, I can't. I don't know of anyone getting fined for going in stormwater drains, and heaps of times we've been hassled by police because I think it's only a bylaw. And you, when you say get hassled, is that when you come out because someone's seen you go in or something yeah, like that? Um, yeah, I can tell you a few, yeah, a few stories about that. Um, but with the with the, but the problem is sometimes just going back onto your question about it's illegal. So sometimes you'll have a drain going in it is a is breaking a bylaw. But sometimes occasionally they're fenced off. That's trespass. So if you go climb a fence or something. Uh, and that so you're trespassing to get to the drain so you get a trespass fine um once again i don't know if you like someone's people have lit fires in drains and blocked roads up above for the whole day because they had to you know i don't know that's obviously but just going in the drains uh is is a bylaw so you don't even get a criminal record um but i guess if the cops do catch you they think you're doing something wrong what are you doing in a drain you're doing they they always do and then once once i realize so so this is another thing that i bring up every now and again is the media thing. What I find is when we were doing media stuff and when we do have little media blitzes, it's kind of educating the police. Mm. Um, and so what used to happen was, like for w- one example, was we had this uh, m- um, movie night in a drain, in a big drain in Paran. And so we had the projection up onto the screen and the police came up and it was like, I don't know, shitloads. Like, there was over 100 people there. So the police were like, what the fuck is going on here? Mm. And um, what didn't help was my, my mate, uh, Amoebix, the police went up to him first and said, what are you doing? And he said, oh, we're, re- we're having sex with goats. <laughs> and um, so I was sort of standing there. All, all the police were, uh, all these questions you could hear, you know, in your periphery, like you could hear, and they're like, well, what about the goats? And I was like, why are they asking about goats? What the? Because we didn't realise that Mick, that Amoebic said. But um, I ended up, um, so they took my, they were Cave Clan. We weren't watching movies, we were watching Cave Clan videos. And it was back in the day where I was still doing editing using VHS. And they took the masters and I was like, fuck, it took me forever. And if you, if you back when it was VHS, if you use a copy as a master, the quality just deteriorates each time. You, you've got to, copy everything off the master and the cop said if you want them back come down to Paran police station and get it and I was like fuck fuck and I knew there was a couple of bit of incriminating stuff on there so I sort of should I and I was like oh fuck it I'll risk it so I went down to Paran police station when he was working he gave me his card <clears throat> and um he finally comes out and he's got the tapes and I was like oh 
what did you think? And it's like nine hours of of <laughs> stuff. And, and like, that's fucking boring. And man. it was so. And it was even boring for us. <laughs> People, people listening to this that know, you know, that used to watch my videos and be like, "Yeah, bloody oath, hallelujah." Um, anyway, um, and then I thought, well, he obviously doesn't sound like he's about to put me in cuffs, so he hasn't seen the bit where I'm doing this or doing that, or other people are doing, you know, as a few. And he goes, "Oh, well," and he was quite a young cop, and he goes, "Well, we started watching them, and and when, while we were watching them." Uh, the chief came in and goes, what are you watching cave clan videos for? And he goes, the cop goes, oh, well, we caught him watching videos. And he goes, oh, don't worry about them. They're fine. And they, so he goes, we only watched like two minutes of it. So that was good. Um, so but, you know the media's work because you've let, you've let people know we're mm, harmless, yes. which is clever. You got on the front foot. And that's, that happened like all of our police, police encounters um, when we'd done, when involved in media have been fine now we're pretty good at or i'm pretty good at dealing with the police like even when things were quieter but that it takes a lot longer to convince them so another story um wes and i we we worked together for a while and there was an expo on and they were doing that tunnel under um elizabeth street and we sort of weren't dressed for it you got to get wet you literally got to wade in um, so like can, like fly fishing type stuff you wear in the whole mm, yeah we we tend not to wear waders but but that's what you need yeah um, and depending on the tide because the river's tidal there um, you might just get wet up to your thighs or knees and um, so they went in and we we walked along the Elizabeth Street and we bought like a packet of sparklers and so when we could hear see their torchlights and that. We were just like dropping sparklers down and you know, just stupid shit, just annoying them. And then uh, we sort of got up to uh, Lonsdale Street. <clears throat> so we're walking along the top, Wes and I. There, there's about 10 people in the tunnel underneath and we're con- communicating with them through grills, uh, manholes in the in the road, in actual Elizabeth Street. And um, we're sort of like up, up a, yeah, as I said, up about La Trobe, Lonsdale, up that end of the city on Elizabeth and it started raining. I'm like, oh shit! So I've sort of got down on my hands and knees and started calling into this manhole grill. It's raining! It's raining! And like this taxi's just pulled up beside me at the traffic lights, and he's like, look, just looking at me like, what? And he's like thinking, this guy is on some serious drugs. He's calling into a, and um, and so anyway, we finally they they got up to us and we're like. It's starting to rain and it's getting heavier. And they're like, oh, we'll go back. And we had an idea that just a bit further up that we could get them out in a safe spot. So we said, get everyone together, go up and meet at the next manhole. I think I can get that off. And uh, anyway, it was next. It was right out in front of a pub. And Wes and I get up there and we're like, they, they start piling, start gathering up. And we're like, make sure everyone's there because you've got to get out quickly. Yeah. Or you want to get out quickly. And I sort of bent, I th- they go, yeah, we're all here. And there's like 10 people in there. And I bent over and I grabbed the manhole and I put, just the second I lifted it up, a police car just drove right past in front of me, just cruising. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And I thought, well, we can't, it's too late. Yeah. So I just pulled it off. And then people start climbing out and the police car comes around and the cops get out and they say to me, what the, what are you, what are you doing fucking around in the drains? And I just said, oh, we just heard, people getting out people they seem to be, need help so and we were dressed in nice clothes you know we weren't yeah and all these people were climbing out we're covered in webs and wet feet and <laughs> shit wet up to there and the cops like well you guys can fuck off so we walked out and we literally walked 10 meters away was that opening of the pub and we sat there we went and got a beer and we were sort of laughing to ourselves and then you know like three minutes later one guy walked in smiling went up and got a beer and Three, another minute later, oh, and another minute realized. later. So they've yeah. taken everyone's details, and and we were like, oh, what what did they do? You know, what did they say? And uh, they were like busting their balls, and then they, then once they realised they were just exploring the drain, the police went into like, oh, you never get us down there. God, that looks scary. You know, what you came in all the way from there? Like they seem more interested, and that's quite a common. The reason I told that story is that's quite a common thing where police will once they realize you're not being a dickhead or you're not breaking the law mm-hmm. you're breaking a bylaw um they're curious like everyone yeah else. they're curious like everyone else like you were saying earlier about you know you don't know you just 
That's the whole point of us having this conversation. Yeah, I'm just like, fuck, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah so they're, they're, they they tend to be like that. And and Silogen, who's a Sydney Cave Clan guy, he's had a lot of encounters with police, and he says the same thing that that they tend to be once they get over the what the fuck are you doing here. They're like, oh wow, really? You know, like they seem more curious and. I think it's yeah, it's an interesting thing from from anyone, whether you're a cop or whether you're not. People are just like, so what's fucking down there? Well, most of us are nice people, so once they start talking to you, I think cops, are, you know, they're, they're, that's one thing they're pretty switched on at is that they can detect, you know, if you're if you're fucking up or not. Yeah, if you're, you know, <laughs> you've mentioned a few people's names, and when I say names, they're um, they're. Nicknames. Uh, nicknames. Alias. So is that is hey, alias? Is that a part of it? Do you always have to have some sort of a alias? If you came in and said my name's Steve, are people like, nah, man, that doesn't work. You need to have something cooler than that. Not many people use their real name, and I think the ones that do use it because they just no one presumes um, that it's their real name. I, I can't use any examples because then you'll know it's their real name. But- <laughs> But um, there are people that use a name and you think, oh, what's your real name? And they're like, it is that. Like, my name's not Doug, mm-hmm. um, but it's not far off. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, no, no, you don't You don't, You don't. don't want to know. Um, you don't want to know. Too much and, about Yeah, me, you yeah. don't want to know too much. And because I've done the newsletters and all that for, Jesus, you know, 30-odd years, like back to that whole reassuring people. Like a lot of people, are like I'm going to send this guy money and tell him where I live so he can send me zine. So I'm really big on um, if you order something from me, you know, I tend to just once I've put, once I've put the address on the envelope, I delete the Instagram message or however you contacted me, and I tell them I, I if you order anything else from me, you have to give me your details again because I don't keep them. Um, the only details I keep are subscribers, people that you know, and then once their subscription expires and they don't, I leave them for a couple of, for a couple of months. And so I'm really big on and yeah, because you don't, even though it is relatively trivial, you don't know. And I'm I'm also paranoid because I have so much stuff. If someone does get in trouble, so I get people like something happened in Sydney. There's a dam there, and they train do their abseiling. The Sydney clan do their because a lot of the places we do. You can need to abseil into. Yep. More so than not really talking about drains, but other things. And um, yeah, and something happened on this dam. Someone was someone fell and died, not cave clan. And they contacted me and said, "Can you take the video down?" Because I had a video and I like, yep, yeah. So as soon as someone contacts me like that, you know, like I'll pull over and I'll do whatever. Like, because um, I do put some stuff that I probably shouldn't. Like, if you look through my account. There's probably stuff where you go, I'm surprised that's on there. Even you as a, you know, who's never real done it, you know, like. So, but generally, I mean, I always, if someone asks me to take something down, I'll take it down straight away. Um, but not, it very rarely happens. Because most of my stuff's old. Like it's 20, I, most of the stuff that I post is quite old. So the people, you probably couldn't even recognise them. Yeah. You'd have to use that app to age them and go. <laughs> to oh, hang age on. people. Yeah, that's- so having having a having a cool name is is part of it. Um, staying incognito is part of it, which must be hard when you're trying to you know get people together and stuff. Especially back in the day, like what do you do? You send out, well, or you write messages in the in the trains, or you send out just a zine and says this is where we're having our annual get together, that sort of thing. Yeah. So well, originally. Um- well, I lived in this flat in um, Arthurton Road in Northcote on my own when the cave clan was just starting to take off and there was no mobile phones and uh, no internet. So I would go down to High Street. I would put a load of washing on, go next door, order a pizza, then I would walk up to the post office because they had four phone boxes so normally one of them wasn't vandalised. <laughs> And I would just have this card and I would just ring and I'd ring a guy from the east, like probably Crit. Then I'd ring a guy from the south, which would be, um, you know, Rusco. And then, you know, I would ring these four people and I'd say, this is, meet at, um, there used to be this uh, pinball parlour called Time Zone. Yeah, I remember Time yeah, Zone. Yeah, Time Zone. There used to be one across from Flinders Street downstairs and that's where we used to meet. We'd say, meet at Time Zone. Depending on where we were going, how far we were going, I'd just give a time. And then... Um, I'd get them and say, you pass it on to everyone. And then I'd go back, 
my pizza and be ready. I put the washing in the dryer, eat my pizza, and then go home. That was my ritual Thursday. And then they they would all do their yeah their they thing would with pass it. it on. And if if one of them didn't, you know, would stuff up all there'd be all these people like oh we we didn't find out about the, you know. So yeah, it was hard. Um, it was hard doing shit like that. And like, what if you had those sort of gatherings and people brought other crew that weren't part of the clan? Was that was that frowned upon? Did you no, have I no? don't I. We, we generally had a thing, even before we had, when I mentioned the 20-year revamp, we generally had a rule like if you bring people along and they're dickheads, they're your responsibility. You've got to tell them to fuck off. We're yep. not going to, you know. And that usually worked. Um, and most people, yeah, they wouldn't bring people along because um, if, they, if they were, unless they were good people. Yep. And I mean, even though if, you know, God, you could. I mentioned Silogen before. You could interview Silogen. He could speak for two hours bagging the shit out of me. He hates me passionately. <laughs> and, um, um, but we're good. You know, Silogen is a good person. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend, I, I believe I'm a good person. I know it sounds a bit wanky saying it about yourself, but like most of us are, are good people. If you're not a good person, um, most of the group would shun you. Not, not, not. It wasn't like a deliberate eyelet, you know. Um, I, I had a problem. One of my problems was when, when we'd have these newbies expos that I was talking about, new explorers expos. I was really friendly and polite, and I was trying to, you know. So it was kind of like you're recruiting. Yeah, and and what I what my plan thought was was well, if you become part of the group, you'll get to know other people, and you know. Where sometimes you get, because I was talking to, I was their first point of contact, I'd end up with like lots of people and some people I didn't really click with. Yeah. And so I got a, I had a bit of a reputation with some of those people was, oh, he seems, it's fake. He's, he seems really friendly, but once you, you know, you're in the group, he doesn't have a lot to do with you, which was true. It wasn't that I was, didn't like them or, you know, if I didn't click with them personally, it was hard to, you know. Be, and you did find that, like, you'd be writing something in the newsletter and you're right, shit, if I say it that way, it's going to offend this person. You know, it was, it was a lot of, you know, I did do a lot of that sort of stuff. But then I just, and then I just get to the stage where I'd be like, ah, oh, you know, I couldn't be bothered. And I'd just say to people, look, fucking, you know, whatever. And I'd cause, and there'd be a bit of an uproar. So sometimes I caused the the politics, you know, the, to erupt, something to erupt. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it wasn't always easy. Yeah. Put it that way. You mentioned the newsletter or the zine, and I feel yeah. like you guys were pretty well. The Il Drano, which you're repping the T-shirt there, but you were pretty mm. a- ahead of uh, the zine culture now, which is everywhere with that DIY sort of stuff. Did you have influence from anywhere, or that just literally started as a fucking as a newsletter that sort of turned into something like that, or did you see that happening other places and thought we've got content, we can fucking make this into something here? Um, I know the first thing I did was just a A4 sheet called Cave Clan News, and that was just handwritten, and I did it totally as a joke, and I sent it to, like, the six or seven members we had, and they all loved it. Like, oh, that's cool. That was so good getting something in my own, you know. And that sort of got me thinking, oh, I don't think – I can't remember Zine. I don't even – possibly didn't even know what a zine was yeah it's just Um, yeah but now it's a whole culture within mm, itself that's huge yeah and i'd say that with the one that you're doing if it's been going for 30 years Mm. it'd be one of the first ones in melbourne possibly yeah i i i I apologize to uh the guy from sticky zines in melbourne because i've told him so many times i've tried to organize to give him some stock and I just think like COVID got in the way and other things that get, and, you know, I just run out and when I think, oh, I'll send him some, I'm low on stock. Um, but he, and they're doing a lot for the zine culture there. Yeah. yeah I follow them on Instagram. They're, yeah. they're unreal. Like, they're, I can't believe that they were around early days. I reckon they were around, I don't know when they started, but mm. they've been around for a long time. And the, the guy who, I can't, I've forgotten his name, but... Um, yeah, they. I used to sell zines through him back in the nineties. So I can't believe they've kept a shop going. I think it used to be that RMIT owned the building and gave it to him for free, pretty much. But I don't know if that's still the case. But I'm definitely going to send him some. Yeah, you should zine. keep definitely. the culture going. Definitely, and I'm- the whole sticker thing as well. Though that's now a whole scene in itself. But uh, you know, 
you guys were definitely pioneers of that sticker thing, and now mm. you go into the city and fuck, man, that whole slap scene is everywhere. People are stick the everywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was gonna, you know, that was gonna happen eventually. It was, but we, I think, when we did it, um, the only thing I remember was, well, there was the uh, fucking national action. They were pretty early on, and they'd have these like rectangular, sort of more square stickers than ours, and they would stop the Asian invasion and all that kind of shit. So what we did was, what I did, me and Woody and a couple of other guys, we just print off. We found this shop that had clearance stickers. Jack in um, Hoddle Street, um, Jack split stickers or something they were called, and we'd buy them to get them for next to nothing. So we just wrote, um, we made up stickers like Cave Clan says fuck the Ku Klux Klan or whatever it was, whatever it needed to be. So it's anti racism. Yeah, yeah. So what we did was all these nas- national action stickers were racist. racist. Were, so what we do is we just, and they put them up everywhere. They were blue ink and rectangular. And we just, like, we put up, um, like literally thousands of stickers over the national action stickers. So I'm not sure if they were before us, but that's why we plus so we used to do dodgy ones. Not not like the hello stickers that graffiti used to, which which weren't were, were they were around that time too. Um But yeah, so we were doing stickers, but the reason I think we went ape shit was when when um national action were putting the the stickers up and we went Oh, you know, let's let's and it, and it coincided with us finding this place that sold these like seven dollars for two hundred sheets of coloured stickers. Mm-hmm. But I was just photocopied jobs that we do, um, and then we sort of really got into it. And then uh, the graffiti guys, like Mirror Mirror, was a graffiti guy from the probably the nineties. Uh, he joined the Cave Clan, and he was really into stickers. And there, you know, there were people that were so we had people that, geez, they were more into stickers than they were. Yep exploring you know because when you go into the drains and i don't think we've even sort of mentioned this but you do have people where they will write their names you call it a guest book i believe or something mm. like that so you know who's been there yeah and that started back in the early days or is that something that was introduced later on when you started little, to build more members a little bit later not like though like maybe the, not until the 90s but probably the mid 90s so a bit later like 10 years into the clan uh, maybe even a little bit later than that. I think Swipe and I, another graffiti guy, Swipe, um, I think him and I started doing them. But that idea was more maybe to stop people tagging so much in the drains. Like if we had this one spot where everyone sort of stopped to see who'd been there, um, it was to sort of stop. Yeah, to not. It was also interesting because you could look and you know see who'd been there and that. But. Um, yeah, that was sort of. I think that was like we'd always just put them on a plain concrete bit near where there might be brick work where people would, you know. So that was yeah, but it was also just a, yeah, it was nice to see who'd been there and all that. But um, and we just used to extend them, so we'd paint one and we just grid it, and yeah, you just put your date, your your name, and a date you were there, and then when that was full, we paint another ten meters. And but the, I don't, I don't think they're. I mean, no, you'd, sometimes you see new ones but i don't think that still happens but that's yeah that was all about the communication communicating with each other and and sometimes you'd you'd see oh this person's been around a bit yeah um but people have sort of given up on contacting cave clan in certain states like adelaide even melbourne it's really hard to get in at the moment i think it's almost got to the stage where you've got to know someone in it or, or you've got to really stand out um it's not like well, I think they still have new Explorers Expos, but I don't think it's the way it was. But so, like, it's interesting now with social media and everything, and I know you still you do Instagram and uh, YouTube and everything, but now the whole Urban Explorer thing is like a YouTube or fucking TikTok thing. Mm. So people are doing it without having to join the group. They're just going out there and they're just doing their own to. thing. Yeah. yeah, so it used to be, like, as I said earlier, in the early days, it was basically you had to con- contact Cave Clan. There was no location lists out there, and or anything like that, or no Google Maps. And um, um, which even it just brings me to another thing. So even now at this time, if you're down in the drain, is your is your maps going to work, or are you still just it doesn't no service down oh, there? Oh, some yet? some tunnels that are just like cut and like that they've just 
done the cut and bury or whatever you call it, where they're just sitting below the ground. Yeah. Or even like at the chamber. That's most of the chambers above ground. It's huge, but there's an underground car park beside it on the other side of the wall, and I'm not even sure what's on the other side now. So you, your phone works in there. At the at the Clannies, you can you know, um, they they did stream it one year, I think. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, but um, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, no, the the generally they don't no, they don't work when you're in deeper further up, and but then sometimes you'll be walking through and. Everyone's phones will start dinging because they've oh, we've the walked where there's a bit of reception. Reception, and when you're down there, can you hear the tra- if you're in the CBD, you know, in Melbourne, can you hear the trams? Can you hear the people, or are you that far removed from everything? Well, Melbourne is a is a good example where you can hear. Um, so when I mentioned the the one under Elizabeth Street, there's another one further along that's a bit more hardcore. But when we first did it, so there you're sort of going through this tunnel, and you can crawl up to the gutters. And the first thing I remember, and this is how old I am, I can remember hearing the police blowing their whistles directly in the traffic, which is probably even before you were born. Yeah. Um, the police, you can hear their whistles. And then, and the other thing I can remember is the Hare Krishnas. Yeah. Ching, ching, ching. Yeah. Coming through the tunnel, through the... Uh, so that, 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 that drain under the CBD it used to be my favourite. That was one of my favourite things about it was the noise. And you could just hear people calling out, Hey! What are you doing? You know, to other people, people on the street. Yeah. Um, that was a good one for, but that's generally you don't hear stuff. I think. Um, and is that therapeutic though? Because you go down there and it is sort of like sensory deprivation sort of thing. Um, oh, well, for certain people, like, there's a guy called Big Ears, and he loves the sound. I don't know if you've seen the ABC. Yeah, I've seen that thing. one. Yeah, yeah. A- a- Big Ears is. Um, he's really into the sounds, but. Um, I'm not sure if we mentioned it in this podcast or whether we mentioned it at the pub before, but um, the whole, um, you know, doing it on your own versus doing it with a group thing. But when I see both sides of it. I mean, I like, I set the cave plan up to always be, to be a sociable thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I want to walk through a drain with you know, a dozen people having a drink, talking shit, whatever. But, um, you know, in recent years I've been doing the, my stuff on my own and I and I've, I have often done stuff on my own. I haven't, you know, and it is it is a totally different thing. Like it's, it's you know, I can see why people enjoy doing it on their own. I mean, it adds to the danger being on your own. But, um, yeah, just the sounds. You, and your body just, when you're on your own, your body, your defence or whatever you want to call it, um, mechanisms are different because mm-hmm. every sound is like oh shit I've got to be more careful I'm on my own so every you know when you hear, and when you hear the boom boom of a manhole hitting the thing when you're talking to someone or walking along with a group of people you hardly notice but when you're on your own it's like it hits you in the chest boom boom and the, the sound hits you in the chest um, and it, it is a, yeah I guess it is a bit therapeutic for people maybe maybe not so much me but I do enjoy um, I remember once I was when we were setting up for the clannies in the old days, and a lot it was just only two or three of us that would set it up, and we had couches up this, up this drain. This is one of the few drains where you probably could live up there for a while. And um, I remember trying to sleep a couple of nights as it's like got so late and everyone had gone. I thought I'll just sleep here and lying like pull out. We had these blankets hidden, and you lie out on the on the couch and just every friggin' little noise. You hear this system noise, and it's a ten foot rat in your head. In your- <laughs> yeah, and like you hear something, that's someone sneaking up. You know, every sound, or when you hear something, you just hear that, and you, yeah, you know, I end up just walking home because I couldn't. You know, my mind's too active to. Um, but yeah, no, sounds are different, and in, in um, like we used to do a thing. God, I'm trying to think what they were called. There was a bunch of these skaters before you were born. And actually, I just looked them up recently, and the main dude died, so I sort of sent them a message. I'm not sure if I got a response, but um, they were called. I might remember them in a minute, but um, we had this weird story, this weird thing, where uh, me and a mate went and did a drain, and we could see f- when we got in, we saw footprints, and we saw these stickers, which I can't remember what they're freaking called. Anyway, um, and they. I thought, oh, weird. Someone's been, yeah, someone's been here today. That's our stickers, you know, the footprints. And we got out, and we just went to another random drain, which was hard to get into. 
and same thing. We got in and there was footprints and the same stickers again. And we're like, this is really weird. We get to a third drain, which is Maze, which is like Melbourne's most popular drain. Same thing again. There's like footsteps and these stickers. And we can hear people up the tunnel. I was with this guy called Misfit. And um, so we turn our torches off and we just walk up the tunnel in the dark. And we've done this. Generally, when you hear someone up there, this is what we generally do is turn our torches off. And you can actually get to the stage where you're standing as close as we are and they don't know you're there. And the, the idea is probably scare the shit out of them. <laughs> and, uh, but, but when we've done it before, like I'm going to jump to another time. Another time we did it in the same drain. We snuck up and there was a bunch of kids and we were standing in amongst them and then we just went, ah, and they shut themselves and they ran all the way out the tunnel, like which is 500 metres, and we just went along behind them and we picked up a couple of shoes and when we got to the end of the tunnel, they were all these like really young, like I felt a bit bad, but they were like about 15 and they're like, and then the guys were like, oh, we knew, yeah, we knew, you know, trying to pretend, but they were, some of them were crying and, <laughs> and we were like, that must be your shoe. <laughs> And, oh, that's your shoe because you look at the people and they had one shoe on. But anyway, we did it. We did it with these guys, the skater guys, and they were really they were quite. Damn it! I wish I could remember their name. That, but um, and uh, we did the same thing. We got up to the section called Dodgy Deals, and they were in there. We got really close up to them, and we did the same thing. We just jumped out and rah, and they were just like, "Oh, here you going, guys?" I totally didn't give a shit. And then they were all like blokes with tats, and back when before tats were. Yeah, everywhere. everywhere. And, um, you know, they were just guys, you know, beards, and we're like, oh, how you going? You know, like, yeah, we became pretty good mates. We um, went to a few of their, their do- Badlands. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Badlands. If you look at, if you Google Badlands skater, skating, you'll see a bit on them. But, um, but they, were, they were awesome. Yeah, they were good. A lot of the, not the individuals' names, but all the drains have different names. And like you're mentioning, all these little sections and you know uh, where they meet up. Mm. So if you explore them, is it your way of like putting your flag in there? You get to name it after yourself. How official is this? Do people fucking beef over who gets to name what spot? You know. Um, well, we've always had the rule: that whoever finds it can name it. Um, I kind of regret that we started naming them after ourselves because. They're kind of boring names, but um, uh, yeah, whoever finds them can name them. Nowadays, like I get, like people call drains by different names. Like oh, I don't know that one, but they're just talking about one. But the names just changed, mm-hmm. and I try and sort of educate people. Not because I don't feel like oh, you're taking away you know something from us just to keep it so we all you know. Because so Melbourne Water told us once that. Um, I should tell you the story that yeah, led go, to go, this. Go. Yeah, um, so we had this um, this guy join the cave clan called the Shadow. This is before we had a good way of getting rid of um, people that uh, didn't suit the group. And the Shadow, well, we called him the Shadow. I can't even remember what he called himself. And um, he used to say, "So one day we we're up at the chamber." this big drain where we have the awards night and that is huge and um we're standing at a well this natural light comes in and then suddenly we sort of looked and we're like oh the, the shadow was there and i said i didn't see you come up and he goes well, that's because i had my cloak of invisibility on and you're sort of looking at him waiting for him to laugh and uh he was a bit you know anyway he wanted to use this chamber as a uh, uh what do you call it like so he wanted to h- find place places for homeless people and while I was waiting, he was wanted to set up the chamber. And he didn't tell us any of this. He wanted to. He might have mentioned it to us in passing that he wanted to set up the chamber as places for people to stay. But it's not like I said. You could probably stay there for it's a bit. Not but you could, habitable. No. Nah. And you know, there's no privacy. And like when the river's up, you have got to wade through water to get in to, at the outlet. And um, anyway, and we basically said, no, no, you couldn't. You know, plus there'd be rats and shit like that. And um, and then we had all furniture up there for the awards night. And every couple of years, Melbourne Water would come up and they'd clear it all out. So anyway, one one morning... Uh, so Melbourne Water took all our furniture away again. And then one morning, um, my phone's ringing at home. Keep in mind, it's before mobiles. So this is this is uh, late 90s. And um, the phone's ringing. And so I get up and answer. I think I was a bit hungover. Someone's like, have you seen the papers? And I was like, no. 
I was like, oh, hang on, we get them delivered. They're on the doorstep. They go, they go, go have a look. So, oh, no, so I had the answering machine. That's right. There's about five messages from five different people because I wasn't answering them too early. <laughs> look, at the, look at the paper, look at the paper. That's when I go, oh, shit, hang on, we've got any. Anyway, and one of the headlines on um, the, Herald's, the, the Herald Sun had um, drain gang threatens official and the age, because the age always had this thing where they'd talk about cave clowners if people knew us, whereas the Herald would say drain gang hunts yeah, officials. Whereas the, it's a bit the, more sensationalist. Yeah, and and, and and whereas the age was like um, a cave clan threatens official, yeah. something like that. Or cave, hunt. I oh know Herald's son was hunt for drain gang. The age was um, cave clan threatens official. So what had happened was... Um, I don't know if it's still well known, but there used to be a thing called the Anarchist Cookbook, and it, it basically was showing you how to do terrorist shit. And um, what this sh- guy, the Shadow, had done was he sent a letter to Melbourne Water, um, saying if you continue to remove the furniture from the Prayan main drain, um, we will not be held uh, accountable for our actions. Mm-hmm. And then did a cave plan logo. But on the back of that, he it was a from the Anarchist School book showing you how to blow up tunnels. Wow. Yeah. So and we that, were like, oh fuck. And you got to get rid of that guy quickly. Yes, which we did, which he which helped us a bit. But um, Edgar, who at the time, like God, Edgar must be about eighty now. We used to always give Edgar shit. He was another member, but he was a lot older than us. He probably wasn't that much older. <laughs> He's probably like ten years older than us, and. Um, he knew a guy from Melbourne Water, and anyway, he arranged this um, d- meeting. They told us later that the police were like, "Where a tap, you know, where a wire. microphone, wire, yeah. And how we went about it was, um, so Melbourne Water used to be at Spencer, near Spencer Street Station. There used to be a pedestrian underpass, so Edgar went and got the two guys and had tickets for them because they didn't know we were going to catch a train. And we walked, they walked through the underpass, and I was at the phone box, Tending to be on the phone, and then I followed, make sure no one followed him. And then we got on the train, and then we caught the train to whatever it's called now, Melbourne Central, whatever it is now. And uh, and um, we got off, and I walked up to them. I made sure no one else got on the train, and then I got on it in the last second. And then we had this meeting with um, with Melbourne Water, and they were like everything. They were just saying, we can't stop you doing it. Um, just. Well, first we sorted the thing out with the shadow. We said, um, he's gone. And they're like, but this, it shows you that you haven't got control over everyone because this person joined and, you know, you you let him get in. So how, how do we know you're not going to let other people? So then they started saying, we want you, you can stay as a group, but we don't want you to recruit any new members. Mm. And we were like, can you give us like, things on safety and that and I go no because that'll be seen as condoning it and we're like well can you anonymously give us stuff showing us the dangers and, uh, and they were like no we can't do that and they were just like no to everything and they were like we want you to basically fuck off and which we didn't do obviously um, but it sort of it sorted things it sorted things out um, with with the shadow as in you know we reassured it wasn't it was an independent act and they believed us and and all that sort of stuff but yeah it that just sort of leads me to something so is there an official like do you get patched up like how do you let these people in as or do you just give them a name and you say you're in or do you when the shadow says something does something fucked up like that do you go mm. mate you've you've been your status has been revoked in that case like cuz all it was was is a bit kooky and a bit weird so we didn't sort of half of the people in the group fit that criteria um sorry <laughs> but um uh and this is before we did the 20 year nowadays i doubt if he'd even make it into the group and if he did he wouldn't last and, and then it's more you know you get told you get you get warnings you can get temporary bans and all that sort of shit it's very different or well, since we had the 20 year revamp it's been very different yeah he 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 was another reason that um when fallon came along I think it was all the same time. There was a few people in it that were like, shit, you know. Yeah. Um, and the worst thing is, is, you know, most people in the group won't do anything. No. So, And when you do do it, you know, you're risking. Sometimes the people aren't, they're just, they've got friends in the group. And so you're, you know, like I said, mentioned earlier on, you, you can, and I know, I know like Id, um, Crit, 
uh, some of these guys that used to be involved in, for want of a better term, kicking people out of the clan, and they hated it. And they were like, you know, because as soon as, <clears throat> when you're explaining why someone's going to be kicked out, everyone's like, yep, cool, cool, cool. Once they get kicked out, then these other people come along and say, why'd you kick my mo- him out? He's fine, you know, and you say, so you got to put up with all that shit. So you um, need an actual board meeting to sort of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas now it's done like, well, it, when I was last involved, if we're going to kick someone out, it would be, you'd actually discuss it and you'd even vote on it, you know, if, if it was questionable. So we've always, like, as far back as I can remember, um, because the the as soon as females started joining the cave clan, you had these social misfit type people that would, you know, didn't know how to act or whatever, or, or would act inappropriately. We've always sort of, as soon as anyone crossed the line, they were kicked out. And I think about... So I generally say like one person used to get kicked out a year um, and I'd say half of the people who got kicked out were for um, going too far, trying, you know, especially when like someone might be drunk at a at an event, at a party we'd be having and then someone would try and take advantage of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they were gone. And, and even the – it wasn't even – like we used to have this thing called the clan girls, um, which recently is gone now because, you know, they're not girls. Um, but, um, yeah, they used to sort of do this thing where they'd say, oh, watch out. When new clan girls would come along, they'd say, watch out for him. He's a bit of a weirdo. Um, uh, which was sort of, that was a bit shit that they had to do that. But it wasn't until they took it further that, yeah. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I, I, had, I had one guy go. So what I generally did was I would, when when I knew it was happening, I would send a uh, a message out to everyone. It was just a template, and it would basically, you know, it's probably take you a few minutes to read it, and it would say, just a reminder, the Cave Clan isn't a dating agency. Blah 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 blah. Um, if you break the, you know these rules, this is before we had the official rules, and yeah, this one guy contacted me, and it was a guy that was a target of it, and he goes, oh, I know you put that out for me. You're a weak cunt, all this sort of stuff. Mm. You're a weak dog. And um, anyway, he didn't. He, he ended up getting kicked out. Um, it's bizarre that people, though, think that they're going to meet someone that they're romantically linked to in a underground drain. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, it, it, like I understand that surely relationships mm-hmm. happen, but the, yeah. if people are going there to try and meet a p- potential partner, it's probably not the best spot for it. As, especially when, yeah, <sighs> some of these guys <laughs> are pretty creepy. <laughs> Well, that be and you are you you you're definitely leaving yourself vulnerable to people that are a, a little bit on the fringes of mm. normal society. So you're going to get some some weirdos for yeah. sure. Um, I don't I don't think uh, like I sort of always made an effort not to get involved. I had a couple of flings, but I sort of tried not to get involved. But so many people have had full on. You know, I've, I've mentioned it on probably every pod, podcast I've done, which is not that many, but. Um, you know, about like Alphen in India. Alphen was from Adelaide Cave Clan. Mr. India was from Sydney Cave Clan. And they got married in an army bunker in Sydney and now they live up on the coast. I'm thinking Queensland on in some mountain range right. with two so kids. It's generational now. Yeah, yeah. Two, oh, gener- yeah, well that's that's that that in itself was um we had a drain drongos, which is, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the old cave clan people. We had a function and there were so many um, Prowler's two or two kids. I don't think his son was there. Um, uh, Crit's daughter was there. Um, I'd just taken my daughter in a first train not long before that. She's fifteen, um, and there was someone else. So, what do the kids? Do the kids think it's bizarre, or do they think it's cool, or what do they think? Do- I don't know. I have to ask Eve. Eve, what do you think? <laughs> No, because like kids are now doing the urban exploring thing. Like, do you, do you like that term? Like the urban, like the, that's what people are calling it. Yeah, urbex, urban exploration. Um, <clears throat> it's been that term's been used for a long time. The ter- the t- there used to be a guy in Canada who did a zine called Infiltration, and he termed um, the phrase urban exploration, and then Silogen from the Sydney Cave Clan um, shortened it or t- abbreviated it to urbex. Well, that was still like twenty years ago. Um, no, look, I don't. I don't know. I don't hate the fact that it's super popular. You know, I'm not like 
that ignorant to say, well, I sort of, to some extent, I mean, it would have happened eventually. I mean, Cave Clan probably, Cave Clan was the first group to travel. And to organise themselves. And to, yeah, to organise themselves and travel to other parts of Melbourne and then interstate and then, you know, overseas. Um, there was, there, we were the first, but I, I think shit like that would have happened eventually. We probably just sped, sped things up. Um, we probably, and, and also, which is, I think, you know, self-analysing, Urban exploring in Australia is a bit more, you know, have a beer. Mm. Whereas other parts of the world is like, why would you drink alcohol when you're in an abandoned building? You need all your wits about you. Mm. Um, whereas, because we sort of created it and the people that we liked and did stuff with liked to have a drink. And so many people, which this is, I shouldn't be mentioning this in the podcast, but so many people have said, I never started drinking until I joined the cave plant. <laughs> but uh, that's Australian culture. I think we like yeah, to drink yeah, when we it, do it, anything. It is, it is. Um, and I think even with that, I think I was just creating a, like, as a teenager, not knowing any better, I was like, oh, well, we have to drink, mm. you know, whereas we, we didn't. But although, as I keep saying, if you look at the zine, if you look at that zine I, I gave you, the near misses one, it's amazing how they're all, they're all pretty much evolved around alcohol. Yeah. All the near misses where we nearly, you know, but I, you know, people are like, no, nah, never, never drink. Like, I, I'm doing a, I do a questionnaire thing on you, my YouTube channel called Drain Talk, and I just ask people, mm-hmm. are you straight edge, alcohol, or drugs? And you know, some people are like, no, nah, straight edge. You've got to be aware. You've got to have your wits. But there's so much stuff I wouldn't have done, you know, like- Without the Dutch courage. Yeah, without the Dutch courage. And, um, I, and, I, and I have to admit, you know, I, well, have a read of that zine when you get a chance. I and, will. And we've never been- I've never, I've never been, you know, sentenced. God, I haven't got a record from it or anything. And when you see some of the shit in it, you're like, how? How have you not? And I think that. I think how? I've had some really close near misses. And, you know, a few people have got criminal records from it, but mainly just trespass and that. But, um, yeah. Do you never- want to, you've mentioned your YouTube channel and your socials. Do you want to give them a shout out? Mm. So, yeah. So I went, I've, I've mentioned a couple of times about the politics in the clan and, um, uh, I think it was Sid Clan that um, they didn't like me being involved in anything they were doing. They were very independent, which was a great, you know, because it meant less work. And um, they had the, they set this thing up where, so we used to talk about when when we'd always vote, uh, discuss and vote, but sometimes things were just like people just like just iron fist it through. It just became a saying, meaning. It's so blatantly obvious. Let's just do it. We don't need all the shit talking. Yeah, rule with an iron fist. Yeah. yeah, and it was like iron fist it through. And because I was trying to, Sydney was having a few problems at one stage, and I was just like, just move on from it. You know, trying to, I was being a bit pushy. And so they were having their their awards night that they have every year, and I was going up to that. And they, one of them told me that they were getting iron fist Doug shirts made up. And I said, can you get me one? And I was like, yeah, okay. And um, so I rocked up to the awards and I knew that the plan was that at some stage they were all going to rip their shirts off. So I just ripped mine off before them. Beat them to the punch. Beat them to, and, um, and I just basically from then on I just owned the – because a lot of people – I guess it sounds aggressive. I didn't even think of that. Iron Fist, Doug. Mm. But it was just the – and then I just want needed a name because Doug, like having the name Doug anything, you know, there's – you have to be Doug – one six seven three eight two nine zero to yeah, so too common, yeah. So I just said went with Iron Fist Doug. So basically anything that I'm on uh, is just Iron Fist Doug on on Instagram um, uh, and Facebook, uh, YouTube, which is the main ones that I'm on. I mean I'm on other things, but um, I, originally I joined Instagram because you know I was hearing so many bad things about it. I thought I'm going to join it and see. Um, if it's as bad as people saying it. And, you know, there are dickheads there, but there's dickheads everywhere. There is. And I I had some images that I grabbed from the internet uh, that I put on Instagram to try and drum up, drum up some attention and said, hey, I'd love to get someone from the Cave Clan on. And then someone tagged you and then they and you said, oh, I made that image. I took that photo. Mm-hmm. So Instagram, I didn't know who you were. I didn't know yeah. yeah how to find. I just wanted someone from the Cave Clan and it worked like that for me. I got yeah. to meet you and uh, you got to come and, and talk. So there are positives for the, the yeah. uh instagram like that you know yeah what I mean? yeah if this turns out to be positive yeah 
<laughs> well, hopefully it does. No, I, that, that, that was weird. That, so I think you put four or five photos up, and I had a different involvement with every one. I can't remember. One I took, one I painted, yeah, one I created, maybe the sticker. I can't remember what it was. But, yeah, yeah. it was like I had some uh, yeah, loose affiliation with each image, yeah, which is probably not that unusual. No, well, that meant I just wanted to get – because my whole idea with this is to talk to people about different stories about Melbourne and different subcultures, and the Cave Clan is definitely a uniquely Melbourne thing. Well, it was. Now mm-hmm. it's grown even bigger. Yeah. And I think it's fucking awesome, and I appreciate you coming to, to tell your story, man. That's all right, mate. No, it's good. I um, It is a – you know, it's still – Melbourne Cave Clan is different to the – rest of the cave clan like you know they're, they're all like brisbane are very we call them the ninja clan because they you know like you they wouldn't do anything like this and adelaide are, are quite clicky like you know like it's really hard to get in adelaide um sydney are quite tech like you know they always they had the first god they had a bulletin board i don't know if you even remember what that is yeah, and they had like um, early internet days yeah, yeah. And they had and then they had the forums way before us and and they're always, you know, they're always sort of a lot more techie. Where we we were, but well, we had our members like we Melbourne had members that would fit into all those groups. But the core of it was, you know, have a good time, have a bit of a laugh, um, don't take ourselves. And we, I've never taken myself serious. And it's probably one thing like when Silage or whoever um, gives me shit, I you know I I don't take it serious. It's like it's hard for me to get um, offended by it. Um, I'm more. I'm more offended. Sorry, I'm more. Um, I don't know if offended is the right word, but with the the seventy k thing that we've we've discussed briefly, um, you know, like some of those guys were like my best mate, like best exploring mates. I really, or even even if they weren't best mates, like I explored with one of them for two or three years, and the others, like I always enjoyed their company. Mm. So with the 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 thing that when they got arrested and I got involved in that. Um, yeah, that affects me more than someone saying, oh, whatever, you're a control freak or, or whatever silage and says, I don't even know, I, I don't really listen. So, yeah, but... Um, if you want to talk... If you wanted to talk about that, that's your thing. I know that it's a it's a touchy subject. Yeah. But if you feel that you want to or if you feel that you can't be bothered anymore, you know, you can... People can see on your... I know on your... Um, personal youtube page you've sort of addressed that issue you're sick of talking about it i guess yeah, yeah well it's not well it, it's it's probably 20 years ago um as i said in that message my, most of my stuff is reactionary so i if they're not talking about it if they're not, you know i tend to not talk about it and i have sort of explained and even after i explained the whole thing i haven't really heard that they've gone oh yeah that what you're saying makes sense um so yeah you know look I mean, for those that are wondering what we're talking about, um, I got arrested in relation to it. Um, I do have a, uh, you, as you mentioned, I have the YouTube clip which explains it in detail. But basically, at the time, I told the guys, I offered the main guy, I sh- told his father, I've got this police statement I made, but it's weak as piss. Um, I told all the guys at the time, this is what they've said to me. This is what I found out, and I found out heaps of shit for them. It was only one interview. Um, in the end, they didn't use my statement. I didn't go to court. Nothing happened. Um, and but then it kicked up years later. So I, I got a feeling that one of the guys who I never really knew, he sort of found out and went found out about it. And went what the fuck. You know um, that there was a statement, which I never denied that there was a statement. It was, it was just weak as piss. Um, you know, I basically did the interview um, to find out stuff for these guys because they were my mates. Anyway, now it's become dog informer and all that sort of shit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, in the end, I thought, fuck, it's still going on after 15, 16, 17 years. So I made the video saying, which I never planned on keeping it up for so long. Um, I just meant I thought. I'd put it up for a, a few weeks, but with that, even with that video, I've deleted bits out. When I found out that some of the seventy k guys were quite upset about bits I'd put in it, and it wasn't, you know, I didn't mention names or anything, but you know, I've, I've been, I've deleted bits of it, like which mm. you can do now with YouTube. They let um, you edit it post. Yeah, yeah. So and and you know, in the perfect world, I'd like to sort it out with these guys. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen now, but I'd like to just sort it out and. Um, but they're all pretty much 
I talked to a couple. Of, I talked to two or three of them, but the rest of them are like, no, nah, don't want anything to do with you. Mm. So it's, it's it's sad because, you know, like I said, I, you know, and I, you know, I swear on my children that everything I did was to help them. Mm-hmm. So it's it's hard to, uh, yeah, that's harder to take than someone saying, Cave Clan sucks or whatever, you know. Cave Clan to me, you know, yeah. It's but pretty- you're worried about the friends you've lost more than anything. Yeah, yeah. And I was worried at one stage when, you know, because I was going into dodgy drains and things like that. If someone saw me and goes, that's Duggo, and someone on meth, you know, fucking pulls out a knife, you know, all that kind of. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't stressing, shitting myself about it, but it was in the back of my head that all you need is someone off their face, you know, to go, oh, you're the. But I have to admit, like, it's been pretty positive. And that video, just just in case any 17K guys listen to this, like the comments, I've actually, I haven't blocked them, but I've made it so I have to look at them first. And most of the comments that I don't put up are ones sticking up for me and being a bit negative towards 17K. I'm not doing this to, I'm doing that to put my story out there, not to Mm -hmm. gain support and, you know, by some random guy I don't know on on YouTube. But um, anyway, yeah, no, that's probably, that's probably more of a, uh, a shit thing, you know, than all the politics and that. I sort of get all the politics and I know in most cases whatever I did ended up working. Like if I if I caused a stink to speed things up, in the end it ended up sorting things out. Whereas this, this thing's been going on for, um, yeah, well, I think like it, it must be 20 years, I reckon, since that, that happened. Mm. Oh, I hope, as someone who's totally removed from it, I hope that you guys can sort that out and you can uh, connect. And maybe it's too far gone, but fuck, who knows, man? Look, there, there. Look, I can, I can say this honestly. I can't. I don't want to mention their names, but they're all. Like, I reckon they're all really good guys. The one that sort of kicked, seemed to kick up the stink the first time. I don't really know him. Uh, you know, like the poor bastard. Had, he went to jail. Like. No, I don't think anyone should go to jail for doing graffiti. No. Um, you know, like I don't, yeah. But I'll, I guess I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, well, man, if, <laughs> look, that's a it's a pretty full-on way to leave it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, Dago, I appreciate you coming to have a chat with me, man. And uh, you've been a fucking a legend. And thanks for sharing your story of Melbourne. And uh, I'd love to go fucking walk through a drain with you sometime. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah no, I'll, um, I'll uh, let you know when the next Drongo thing's coming up. But it won't be for a few months now. But been winter. But uh, yeah, no, for sure. I'll take in one where you got to bend over and get muddy and spider webs and <laughs> like as if I'm going to do that anyway. <laughs> I'll get in there. I, I have a rule, um, and everyone knows this: that if if I if they're going to invite me into a drain, I have to be able to stand up in it and not spill my beer. So yeah, I'm not into any hardcore stuff nowadays. I'm into. I like the idea of having a beer, man. You get me in those drains, no worries. Yeah. All right, thanks, Doug. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for doing it. No worries. Not a problem. Cheers.